Here we have the new 2023 Ford F-250. This one comes in the XL trim level in Oxford white. And then we have medium dark slate vinyl interior. You get the long bed on this one. And the powertrain consists of a 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel V8 engine made it to a 10 speed torque shift automatic transmission. And with this one being <laughs> so massive, it's taking a little longer to walk around this one. But this is the full on crew cab with the long bed. Coming around the front end here, we have our halogen headlamps and halogen fog lights. And sorry for the noise, this engine is loud and the wind is also getting in my way. But here we have 17 inch steel wheels. And over here we have our power door lock controls power mirror controls you can just pick a side click and unclick and then you can adjust there rear window lock is here and then we have one touch automatic front windows and then we have normal power windows for the back tons of storage in the door panel two bottle holders then we have our headlamp controls here and we just turn that switch to get them on and off we can click that for the fog lights bed light there and then we have our brightness for the gauge cluster we can adjust and then we also have an electronic parking brake so we just Pull up to engage, hit the brake, press down to disengage. I'm gonna open the hood for later. And then here we have our four way manual driver seat, and then we have manual lumbar support as well. But I had that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size, being 6'3 with longer legs. Basically, how I like to sit when I drive. Let's check out the leg room behind. Now, it's a hop up in here, but once you're back here, tons of space. I mean, tons of space. So several inches, probably half a foot between my kneecaps and the back of this seat. And this is neat. We get two USB-C charge ports here, then a 12 volt. And then this can serve as a little storage pocket there. Cause we don't have anything on the back of the seats here or in the middle. But I do like that we have the premium dome lights and then nice hanger hooks here. You can probably hang four or five hangers on there. It looks sturdy and it's nice and wide. And then grab bars there. Over here to the fuel caps, death fluid, diesel goes there. And again, I'm sorry if the wind noise is really bad. Between that and this truck being loud, can't catch a break here. But there's the rear end. And I will say I do love the beefiness of the truck in general, just how loud this turbo diesel is. It just sounds like a true diesel in my opinion. Let's take a look underneath the truck. Spares right there. Check out this exhaust. I like we have the bedside steps on both sides as well. And then we have a four-way manual front passenger seat here. And a nice, nice size storage compartment up top here. I think this is one of the biggest ones I've seen that doesn't have the flip down tray. Then we have a lockable glove compartment here pretty good size space in there as well but I want to give a huge shout out to Ford Lincoln of Franklin for allowing me to review this truck today I'll leave a link below to it as well as their full inventory in the description below but there is the window sticker you all can pause anywhere you need to and there are the options there the stickers right at 65 345 Now, as we come around to the front end here, let's go ahead and pop this. If I can figure it out, there it is. There's that 6.7 liter turbo diesel, the trusty power stroke. Now let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. Oh, this is interesting. Just a fun fact there. This was a lucky winner for road testing. But steering wheel here, I like the hard vinyl here. It actually feels nice and it feels thick, but it looks good as well. Now over to the radio here. 
Up top, we have our exhaust brake or engine brake. Search for your vehicle. And then the hazards there, traction control. And then to the radio, we do get AM, FM, and Bluetooth. And we also have wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto as well. And then settings are here. And you can do this from either the phone app or the settings. You can go add a phone. Your vehicle on your device and it's pretty and easy to just discover found. one and pair that. And then your features are here. And then the only driver assistance you have is a pre-collision assist and then the rear camera delay. Then here's the backup camera there. Guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel. And then you can turn that auto park brake on. Little storage pocket underneath here. I like how they did that. Then we have volume controls here, tune knob here. And then this you can use to go through your band. So between AM and FM. And if you have something else hooked up, it'll do that too. So I like how they did that. And then you can use this to cut off the screen. And then you can use this to go through like a seek button. Then you have a play and pause button there. AC controls are here. You just have single zone manual. So you can adjust fan speed. You can toggle the heated mirrors, the direction of the airflow, power, AC. Then you can turn the max AC on there. And the same thing with the heat. Then you have a USB-C, USB-A input. You can use that for the wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. 12 volt here, and then 12 volt there. 120 volt right there. And then you have a trailer brake controller, four wheel drive controls. This is going to be your rear differential lock and then your drive modes, you can toggle here. And I'll show you all of those now on that digital part of the gauge cluster. You have eco, tow haul, normal, slippery roads, off-road. So I have to keep it right there. And then two cup holders here, center console space there. And then middle seat folds up there. Then to get it to come back down, push this here. And then it's a little heavy, but that's how you get it down. There's a view of the back seat from up here. Sunglasses holder, dome lights there. Now over here you have your cruise control, so nothing special here. So just regular cruise there, and then your cancel. This is a mute button, volume controls, voice recognition. And then over here, Bluetooth control. You can use all this for the gauge cluster, and then this is for your track list or radio station presets. And then in the middle part of the gauge cluster here, this is where you use all these buttons. So you can look up your fuel economy, which I like, because usually it's kind of hard to pull that up on a truck, but there's that calm screen speedometer. So not a ton going on, but all the stuff you would need there. And then of course you can go into your towing and whatnot here and look at all of that. But windshield wiper controls are here. And you go up from the intermittent to low, high, and then windshield wiper fluid, push this front button here. And then high beams are there. Toggle those on and off and you can flash here. And then for the shifter, pull up, reverse, neutral drive, and then you have your manual mode. And in manual mode, you can manually shift right there. And to do that, you hit that button. And you can shift through all 10 speeds when applicable. Turn the windshield wipers off. And then this one does have a turnkey and it does have remote start. But next we're gonna go ahead and take this 2023 F250 XL out on the road for a quick test drive. So starting the test drive out in the F250, I forgot to mention the tow figure, so I'll leave that in the description below. And I also forgot to look underneath the seat. So there's plenty of storage underneath the back seat there and it's very easy to fold up. And there's not like a storage compartment or something in the way there. So tons of space in this XL. But I drove the new 24 Sierra and Silverado 2500s. This just rides a bit more rugged to me. 
just with uh, empty weight. So just keep that in mind. But just as easy to drive as those, I think. This one might be a bit easier, actually. The steering feels good. Brake pedal feels good. It feels more traditional, I think, than the AT4 and Denali Sierra that I drove recently. Now for me, one of the things that stuck out, I haven't driven a new base model. I've driven a Silverado 2500. It was an LT though, but for this one to be the XL, which is about as low as you can go, it doesn't feel like that. The vinyl seats are actually pretty comfortable. I love having the vinyl floors in here. The only thing that's missing for me would probably be a bed liner, but other than that, this is ready to work and it still feels like a new truck. It doesn't feel like it's dated or needs a refresh or anything like that. So the only thing I would do is swap out the halogens for LEDs, but of course Ford wants you to upgrade to the Lariat and so on so that you can get those LEDs, but you're having to pay another 15, 20 grand in price. So I think this is a great deal being it right at 65, 66 grand. You get the turbo diesel with that 10 speed and you really don't have anything that you don't need. You still get your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, your FM, your Bluetooth. I'd like to have adaptive cruise control, but I'm sure you can add that on. Maybe not to the XL, but you can certainly add it as an option, I would think. Some driver assistance package or something. So like I said earlier, in terms of drivability, this one just feels a little more traditional in terms of ride quality. I will have to double check the the difference in the suspension, I think. Like I said, I drove an AT4 and a Denali, and with this one being a bare bones XL, there might be difference in suspension parts or maybe a adjustable, whatever, I don't know. But this one, like I said, just rides rougher, but it could have to do with the road as well because I'm in Franklin driving this and I was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee driving all of the other ones. And those roads are just a tad bit smoother. Let's see if we can give it a little pull here. Yeah, the power is definitely there. Very strong. And I will say when you're not on the engine, it, it's not that loud, but as soon as you give it a bit of throttle, you can just hear it. And I think a lot of diesel owners appreciate that. But if you're looking for a more quiet truck, I feel like the, the Sierras are not as loud and I will have to drive a 2500 to see. But again, with this one being the XL, hopefully I'll get to drive a Lariat here soon and maybe I can compare or see a difference with a turbo diesel in that as opposed to this XL here. But the F-250s and F-350s, they have a history of being pretty capable when it comes to towing being as good, if not better than its counterparts. Now sometimes Ram beats everybody out because they just have crazy towing capabilities, but I feel like this F-250 is if all other things were equal, I would go with the F-250. Just based on what I know, even if the Ram can tow a bit more. Specifically for the driver assistance that can come on a, an XLT or a Lariat as opposed to Ram's Bighorn or whatever in that mid-range trim level. As I'm driving it and getting used to it, it actually, it's pretty agile for a heavy duty truck. It might not feel it, but it handles, it handles that curve very well. Now these of course gonna be 
a little top heavy with them being heavy duties, but still, I don't feel like it's very hard to maneuver or that I have to be extra careful with it. Just drive it normally like you would in a 1500 and you should be good. But you can definitely feel the weight of this truck as you're driving it. But for the price point, right at 65,000, if you're looking for a good work truck and you want all the technology features that you haven't had in terms of just your infotainment system and having a digital middle cluster here and having a three prong plug in the truck definitely a great option specifically if you're needing to have that diesel engine and the brakes feel great too but this will bring me to the end of my review of the 2023 ford f-250 and the xl trim level